welcome to this uh, symposium dedicated to Purastat, a novel self-assembling peptide for hemostasis in cardiac surgery. I'm Professor Jean-Christian Roussel, cardiac surgeon in Nantes Hospital University in France, and I'm glad to share this session for a novel surgical glue, are you going to say? Yes, it is Purastat is another hemostatic agent among the jungle of about 20 products available on the market and waiting for you on the operative room shelf. I will rather have to compare the hemostatic market to a farm because many products are of animal or human origin. Sometimes it's as difficult to, to choose the right hemostatic agent as it is to treat the intraoperative bleeding. Why the market is so crowded? because perioperative bleeding in cardiac, sur cardiac surgery is still prevalent even in the 21st century. The problem is uh, uh, very real. An, an universal classification of perioperative bleeding called UDPB in cardiac surgery has even been published in the GTCS in 2014. It's based on total blood loss from chest tube within 12 hours, transfusion of allogenic blood products, and surgical re-exploration. This UDPB classification allows us to better analyze an important survey about Tika Grelor, published in JAMA in 2016. We can see that 25% of patients or they're going cabbage for acute coronary syndrome, either on aspirin alone or on aspirin combined with Tika Greller, uh, had UDPB grade two bleeding, which means they bled about one liter, had to be transfused from two to four red blood cell unit and plus two fresh plasma unit. We can see also that 10% of the patient where UDPB3, which means they bled between one or two liters. A more recent survey published in the Thoracic Journal in June 2012 alerted us to the serious hemor hemorrhagic consequences of double antiplatelet anti aggregation during cabbage. In this study, a quarter of the patients had bled more than two liters in the group of double antiplatelet aggregation, regardless of the aspirin-associated molecule, clopidogrel, ticagrelor, or prasugrel. The rate of blood cell transfusion was 85% in this group. Different blood conservation strategies have been developed to decrease the risk of perioperative transfusion in cardiac surgery. Perioperative strategies are based on the use of antifibrinolytic molecules, the control of the hemodilution during CPB, cell salvage, and points of care test. Another essential condition is to have a calm and meticulous surgeon who will not hesitate to use pledged suture to control bleeding sites. And this Zen surgeon will be able to use a local hemostatic to better control the bleeding. Topical hemostatic agent can be classified into active and non-active hemostatic agent. The active ones contain thrombin, a powerful enzyme involved at the end of the coagulation cascade by activating the fibrinogen into fibrin, which will form the mesh network capable of trapping red blood cells and platelet and stopping the bleeding. Initially of human or bovine, bovine origin, present a theoretical risk of infections, agent transmission. Then recombinant human thrombin was developed as an alternative. On the other hand, non-active hemostatic agent contain no thrombin at all or other active floating factor. They are divided in two subgroups, 
the mechanical group and the synthetic sealant. The mechanical hemostatic agent are made up of collagen, cellulose, gelatin or polysaccharoid spheres to form a physical matrix providing a barrier over the bleeding sites, capable of activating the extrinsic clotting pathway. They have the appearance of a sponge, mesh, or powder. The other group named surgical glues and are commonly used to prevent such a whole bleeding and can also be used as adhesive. It's also possible to cross these two large families of hemostatic, one active with one non-active. We distinguish two subgroups, one called flowable hemostatic that combines thrombin plus a mechanical matrix and works by promoting thrombus from a production at the bleeding sites. The best known are flow seal or surge flow. The other group is called fibrin sealant and combine thrombin and fibrinogen. They are administrated as a liquid powder and patch to act as both hemostatic agent and sealant. It's also interesting to analyze this classification according to the origin of the product. We can see that a large majority of hemostatic are of human or animal origin. Only the group of mechanical hemostatic can be considered as the most vegan one. It may be simpler to classify hemostatic agent according to clinical needs. Three situations must be distinguished. In case of diffuse ventricular hematoma caused by myocardial rupture or ventricular wound by a guard wire during TAVI, there is nothing better than using a hemostatic patch. In case of aortic dissection, to facilitate closure and suture of the false channel, there is nothing better than a good surgical glue, such as bioglue. And finally, in case of bleeding, that is difficult to compress, such as such as around the coronary artery anastomosis, or as a preventive measure on the aortic suturing, nothing replaces a hemostatic gel. And among the hemostatic gels, purastat has a predominant place. Why? Because it's a synthetic peptide kept in a very acid solution. In contact with unique solutions such as blood or other bodily secretions, the change in T causes a self-assembly of the peptide into sheets, creating a 3D matrix that reminds us the fibrin network and able to stop bleeding. So if you have understood the classification of local hemostatic. Purastat is now a new non-active hemostatic agent because it is thrombin free. It belongs to the subgroup of mechanical agent. It's a synthetic agent without any animal or human derived component. It's ready for immediate use with no preparation required with a unique mode of action. So now I will give the floor to our three speakers, Professor Di Bartolomeo, former director of the cardiac surgery unit in Bologna University, and he will speak about perspective on Purasta, followed by Professor Ori, consultant cardiac surgeon, will speak uh, about overview on clinical data, and we will end up uh, with uh, Dr. Astudillo uh, from the University of Uppsala in Sweden, and his talk will be about uh, above and beyond with Purasta. 
I am Professor Roberto Di Bartolomeo from uh, University of Bologna. First of all, I would like to thank for the kind invitation the 3D matrix. I will present our experience with Purastat in cardiac and aortic surgery. The use of sealant in cardiac and thoracic aortic surgery is very common for these reasons. Fragile tissue, for example, aortic dissection, red operation, pseudoneurysm repair, complex vascular reconstruction with many anastomosis, small vessels reimplantation, long-standing operation to reduce major bleeding. Purastat is a novel hemostatic agent. The big advantage of Purastat is it's very easy to prepare and ready to use. It's also very fast and is able to stop bleeding in a few seconds. Its transparency helps a lot in case of secondary bleedings. I have also appreciated the fact that it can be used in different times during the operation without the need of changing the applicator. Purastat is indicated for hemostasis during surgery and can be used as an adjunct to standard methods of surgical repair along suture lines and to bond and seal soft tissue. Purastat provides a physical barrier to stop bleeding in a variety of surgical indications. Specific indication in cardiovascular surgery are many. Example, are proximal or distal ascending aorta reconstruction and coronary reimplantation, like in bendal operation. Arch repairs, aortic dissection and ventricular aneurysm repair, CAPTCH and mode order. There are some instructions to follow to make it apply properly. The residual syringe space must be removed. It's necessary to have a dry surgical fill. Direct the type as close as possible to target lesion. The application of a pura stat should be slow and able to cover with a thin layer the desired vessel on graft anastomosis. Just wait a few seconds for the glue to work and is not necessary to remove it after application. This is an example of use of a purastat in frozen elephant trunk operation in the distal and the proximal anastomosis. I had the privilege to use a purastat for the first time in Europe in 2015 during a live aortic arch repair in my eighth postgraduate course on the surgery of a thoracic aorta in my city, Bologna. This is a video of the use of a purastat in frozen elephant trunk procedure, a complex operation I performed in type B aortic dissection. The aortic arch is completely removed near the epiortic vessel and the frozen elephant trunk prosthesis is introduced in the descending thoracic aorta. After the distal anastomosis is performed, the purastat is applied all along the suture line. We also use the sealant for the anastomosis for epiortic vessels. This is the final result after the complete arch reconstruction. This is another case where we use the depurastat in case of a thoracabdominal aneurysm repair with excellent result. In conclusion, purastat is a new sealant that provides a physical barrier to stop bleeding and variety of surgical indication especially in complex aortic operation when multiple anastomoses are necessary.
main advantages are ready to use and no preparation is required. In our experience, Purastat is a safe and effective agent in all cardiac and aortic surgery, including complex arch reconstruction and orgabdominal neurism repair. Thank you for your attention. A warm welcome to everyone listening. My name is Professor Sunil Ori. I'm a cardiac surgeon at University and Hospital Southampton, and I have been using Purostat for a few years now, and I wanted to share my experience with you in the use of Purostat as a, a hemostat for cardiac surgery. So the causes of bleeding in cardiac surgery are multifactorial. They are patient factors, and often we're dealing with quite elderly patients uh, these days who have thin degenerative tissues. And many of, of our patients uh, present on anticoagulants and uh, antiplatelet agents, and often uh, surgery today uh, is urgent or emergent. There are, of course, operative factors, and that is where long operative times, particularly bypass times, which can interfere with the coagulation system and particularly platelet function, and when uh, cooling has to take place for major aortic surgery, and when we're using artificial conduits, uh, again, for aortic surgery. So the potential benefits of using hemostats are that they are, I think, important adjuncts for the control of bleeding. There is a potential for redu reducing blood transfusion requirements and operative times. And I think with the growth of millimeter invasive surgery, I think they may also facilitate this approach. And um, there is a potential for reducing costs by reducing operative times, reducing transfusion requirements, and, and also reducing the need for re for bleeding. So there are a whole plethora of agents which are currently available to uh, try and reduce bleeding with cardiac surgery. And this table summarizes all the different types of agents which are available, which are uh, generally divided into hemostats, sealants, and adhesives. And I've highlighted some of the more commonly used ones, at least the ones that we use more frequent, frequently in my own unit. Uh, most of you will be familiar with fibrillar, flow seal, tissue, and Eversil. And bioglue, of course, is quite often used for major aortic surgery, which is from bovine serum albumin with uh, glutaldehyde. So the novel features about Purostat, which makes it different from the other hemostats, is, is it's a nanotechnology. It's probably the only nanotechnology which we currently use in cardiac surgery. It's based on the self-assembling synthetic um, peptide platform. And it is, of course, CE marked and approved for surgical uh, hemostatic use. It's very safe. It's non-biogenic. It's totally biocompatible. And it's broken down um, by the body into peptides and then amino acids before it's, it's totally absorbed. The other interesting thing is, uh, is that you can apply uh, Purostat even when the patient is heparinized uh, because of uh, the exposure of sodium ions within the blood. And it will start to, to actually uh, form these um, uh, beta pleated sheets. And then you can for, uh, pl uh, put a second application um, once the patient has come off bypass and protamine has been given to reverse heparin. The formulation is, is very simple and straightforward. It comes in three volumes, one, three, and five mils. Um, and the scrub staff um, really like this product because it simply means opening a packet. There's no defrosting, no mixing required, and it's uh, available for immediate use by the surgeon. So we uh, undertook a study uh, at Southampton, which we published um, back in 2018, and we wanted to understand its potential efficacy, uh, particularly for suture line uh, hemostasis in cardiac surgery. Uh, this was an observational um, evaluation, and we looked at 50 consecutive patients undergoing cardiac surgery, and uh, we, we assessed its um, uh, ease of use and its efficacy uh, using a uh, questionnaire. Uh, you can see that, the, that most of the sites at which Purostat was applied was aortotomy, mainly for aortic valve replacement, but also it was also applied at graft suture sites uh, for needle hole bleeding, uh, top end of veins, 
and of course for um, patch repair of the aortic root and uh, distal and proximal anastomotic sites in aortic surgery. Uh, so these are a couple of uh, intraoperative photos. Uh, the first one shows a pyrosac being applied to an interposition aortic graft case where it's been very successful in stopping uh, needle hole bleeding both at the proximal and distal anastomotic site. And the second photo uh, is a more complex case where there's been an arch replacement. And again, um, this has um, been uh, very successful in stopping needle hole and suture line bleeding. So the types of operations were uh, uh, predominantly aortic valve or AVR and grafts but a mixture of other uh, procedures, including David procedure and even emergencies with the type A dissections. So um, when the questionnaire results were analyzed, we found it that um, the surgeons were very happy with the ease and efficiency of use and how quickly it could be dispensed um, from the applicator and how easy it was to apply to bleeding sites. Uh, overall, um, it was effective in about, uh, uh, in more than 80% of cases, and in 15 to 16% of uh, cases, further applications uh, required of uh, Purostat and often with another hemostat such as fibrillar. So in terms of other experiences with Purostat and cardiovascular surgery, um, this is what was one of the first publications in the literature in, from 2012. And at that time, um, it was evaluated both in an animal model, in a rabbit model, as well as uh, a clinical uh, evaluation that was undertaken. So in this rabbit model, um, the animals were heparinized and then needle holes were made into the aorta. And um, in all the animals, it was 100% effective with hemostasis being achieved. And um, this is a histological slide on the left here. Of the, and you can see this blue arrow is pointing to where the clot has been formed uh, to seal off the needle hole. And uh, the black arrow is pointing to this sort of um, coating which has formed with the uh, pyrostat, which uh, then allows this clot to form underneath to stop uh, the bleeding. The clinical evaluation was in 25 patients um, looking at 33 bleeding sites. You can see there was quite a variety of operations, including OBCAV surgery, as well as uh, peripheral vascular grafts. And Puristat was applied to oozing anastomotic sites. And looking at the primary endpoint, which was stopping intraoperative bleeding, you can see that it was effective in nearly 88% of the 33 bleeding sites that were evaluated. And bringing things up to a bit more up to date, this is um, the latest uh, data from 2019. This is a study which was undertaken uh, from a German center looking at LVAD patients. And in this study, uh, 15 patients were evaluated looking at 29 surgical bleeding sites. And uh, they also measured the time to hemostasis, which was around uh, 20 seconds. But in the vast majority of cases, there was um, very good hemostasis that, that was achieved in over 90%. And a minority of, uh, of, 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 uh, of patients required additional applications or required additional uh, suturing, uh, as well as uh, additional hemostats. So um, in summary, I think uh, Purostat has a number of advantages. It's uh, a totally synthetic uh, peptide product which makes it inert. There's no risk of contamination from viral or bacterial agents. There's no risk of allergy formation. Um, it's very easy to apply. It comes in a very simple formulation, uh, which is a ready to use syringe. And it, it is still possible to place additional sutures if required uh, because it is a transparent uh, hemostat and allows bleeding points to be easily identified. It also can be reapplied and it is easy removal if that is uh, necessary. It's slightly viscous, which um, makes it uh, a good agent to be uh, using in less invasive uh, approaches and uh, can be delivered down endoscopically and laparoscopically. And in fact, has been used quite extensively in gastroenterology already. So it can be used in a wide, a wide variety of cardiac um, surgery procedures and all types of aortic grafts, including bi-integral bioconduit 
uh, in which, for example, bioglue is contraindicated. It may be used in isolation or in combination with other hemostats, and um, that is our experience, certainly in Southampton. Thank you for your time, and I'm available for any questions. My name is uh, Rafael Astudillo. I am a cardiac surgeon working at the University Hospital in uh, Uppsala, Sweden. I got acquainted with Pyrostat for the first time. It was almost uh, three years ago, and I have been using it since then. Does the perfect hemostatic agent really exist? Well, the characteristics of an ideal hemostatic agent should be, of course, that it should have the capability to stop large vessels, arterial or venous bleeding within minutes after application. It should act very rapidly and effectively. One of the most important things in my experience is that it should no, no need any, any requirement of for mixing it up or, or pre-application or preparation of any kind. That means that uh, when we need it because we get some bleeding, then we just take the hemostatic agent directly from the shelves and just apply it. It should be very uh, easy to, to apply it and uh, very easy to handle with. And uh, one, another issue that is very important is that it should be durable. And I'll be back about this, this point later because uh, uh, this is a very important issue as well. Uh, it should be safe to use with no risk of injury to tissues or, or transmission of uh, infection of any kind. And this is, this is very important as well because Purestat is a completely a synthetic product uh, consisting of uh, 16 amino acids that we will talk about later on. Last but not less is that it should be cost cost effective because uh, because uh, that's the way we want it. What is Purestat? Purestat is a self-assembly peptide nanofibrous scaffold, even coal even known as the SAPNS or the RADA 161. And it consists of, a, of 16 alternating uh, hydrophobic or, or, or hydrophilic uh, amino acids. And this is important because when, since they have different uh, 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 ion, ionic charges, then when they are interacting, interacting between each other, they are forming a very durable structure. And that is what I mean when, it's, when I'm talking about durability, because when we are using, when we are using a, a, a hemostatic agent, it should stay. It cannot be just washed out through the bleeding. I will briefly show you how to use Purostat during cardiac surgery. This is a, a male. 67 years old, with a medical history of a severe aortic valve stenosis, smoker, and uh, even a previously diagnosed uh, prostate uh, cancer. The aortic clamp has been uh, put on and cardioplegia has been given. The calcified aortic valve has been excised and replaced with a biological valve prosthesis. We are placing the sutures as uh, usual. And then once the prosthesis is in place, the aortic clamp has been taken away. We realized that the hemostatic agent was needed in order to stop the bleeding from the autotomy suture line. And even from the temporary pacemaker wire attachment site on the right atrium. Purestat was ready to use immediately we are taking Purestat directly from the shelves in the theater, causing no delay to the procedure. The application of Purestat is very easy. It's very easy to handle with, and they use Purestat in large amounts. 
of the product and afterwards you don't need to put any compress on it just let Purastat work as it should be now we are applying it on the pacemaker wire attached to the right atrium wall and uh, this is real time as well and now hemostasis has been uh, successfully achieved as you can see This is, in other words, a, a tissue engineering with a nanotechnique at a very, very high level. Besides the hemostatic function, Purestat has been even shown to reduce inflammation at the surgical site. And uh, in some of the papers, they have even shown that uh, there is some kind of tissue regeneration and even promotes the healing of the tissues. We will mention this a little bit later as well. A hemostatic agent should be tissue friendly. And what I mean with that is that the, whenever we get a surgical wound, then, then the uh, inflammatory phase will always uh, come uh, into this um, issue because uh, uh, th that is a natural is a natural part of the healing process of the surgical wound. And um, uh, classical signs of uh, inflammation are, are erythema, uh, heat or edema, pain as well. And uh, this is needed because uh, that is just the way it is in the, as in, uh, that, that is nature. Uh, additions, are another issue that uh, is concerning our surgeons uh, in, in, a, in a very high uh, level because additions are supposed to come from, uh, from the, uh, after inflammation and uh, if the tissues are get too much uh, 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 affected by the inflammatory process then probably you will get more additions afterwards and that means a lot, especially when we are doing a, a, a re-operation, a redo surgery, because the additions sometimes might be very, very difficult to, to, to handle with. The, uh, what I mean is that the less inflammatory process, the less additions, the better for the surgeon. In these two papers, uh, dealing with uh, wound healing, with uh, uh, this self-assembling peptide. Um, the first one is, uh, is, uh, is a nice paper coming from both uh, China University and even a university in the US. And uh, they have compared five different substances in uh, uh, different groups of, uh, of rats. This is made in, uh, in rats. And uh, they have used the, the Purestat, the which is in the highest to the left of the of the figure, and then the, the second one is the kaitosan. Kaitosan is a substance that is uh, has been taken out from the shelves of the of the shrimps. It's a very effective hemostatic agent as well. The third one is a PD lactic acid. The fourth one is a control group, and the third one is a collagen, coming of course from the from the animal kingdom. At uh, 21 days, uh, we can see that there is a clear tendency for the group in, uh, in Purestat in, uh, in uh, getting uh, uh, a higher degree of uh, rate of one uh, contraction. And that is positive because uh, that means that the, the, the surgical wound, the, the healing is accelerated in a, in a nicely way. The second paper is a paper coming from the US where they have compared 24 and 48 hours, the effect of um, uh, Purestat versus um, the control group and the, and the other one, the control group versus Purestat with, uh, with the epidermal growth factor, um, which uh, shows that uh, the percentage of the wound closure is uh, much, much higher uh, in the group with uh, Purestat. And these videos, they are, they are coming from the laboratory at Uppsala 
animal laboratory. And in the first uh, video, we have just made the very superficial cat into the anterior part of the liver. I should say this is the, the very first experiences we had with, uh, with Purastat. This is the way we learn how to use Purastat. And uh, you can see that uh, we are applying Purestat with this uh, special applicator. And uh, we can see as well that uh, the bleeding is stop. All these uh, videos are real time. I mean, you can see exactly the time it takes in order to achieve uh, a good hemostasis. In the second video, we are making a, a deeper cut, probably three millimeters in, in in depth, and then uh, we are applying Purastat there as well. And then we learn that uh, we are using the tip of the suction in order to apply a high pressure to the to the wound in order to to be able to apply Purastat on it, and we could see a better result. Now, in the middle of this cut, we can see that uh, there is a still a bleeding point. Probably it's because we just touch or injure a, a bigger vessel. And then, uh, of course, we are using uh, Purestad again, just exactly in that uh, bleeding site. We are completing it, completing it again from one side. And then uh, afterwards, we are applying a little bit more of Purestad on the other side. And then uh, we achieve. Uh, a very good hemostasis. In the in the third video, then we can see, and this is just a couple of minutes after that we have done these cuttings and the using Purestat. That I am taking away the Purestat from the surface of the of the wound just to try because I I didn't know this, and then what I noticed was that uh, even though I'm taking away the upper part of the purestat, then uh, the wound is not bleeding. And that means that the purestat is working deep into the tissues, you see? Purestat is not a glue. You can take it away very easily. You don't need a compress on it to press it. But until today, I'm very fond of purestat. Uh, I'm still using the compress, but that is something that is just uh, as an instinct, not because it is needed. Once again, going back to the question, does the perfect hemostatic agent really exist? Well, um, I have been working in cardiac surgery for the last three decades, and I have seen uh, a lot of uh, these uh, products coming up to the market. And uh, I, I do believe that uh, the ideal a hemostatic agent does not exist yet. But uh, using Purestat, I have to say that uh, I do believe that uh, we are getting very, but very close to it. Soon we will get the ideal hemostatic agent and, and uh, Purestat is in a very good way there. I finished this uh, presentation uh, thanking you all for your attention and uh, I hope to see you soon. Thank you. In conclusion of this three presentation, I hope you were convinced by Professor Di Bartolomeo's testimony on the use of Purastat during complex aortic surgery, by the clinical and experimental results obtained by Professor Ori, and by the incredible videos on the efficacy of Purastat on hepatic wounds. We can definitely say that Purastat's place among the hemostatic family is unique by its unequal properties. We encourage you to try Purastat during surgery where hemostasis control may be difficult. Thank you very much for your time and have a great e-congress.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are now continuing this symposium live to receive your questions or comment. I uh, hope you were able to enjoy this different presentation in good condition. All speakers tonight are very convinced of the usefulness of this hemostatic agent. And we will try to share with you what makes us to use Purastat. So while waiting to receive your questions and remarks, I would like to start with Professor Bartolomeo. So Professor Bartolomeo, during your very challenging surgery with many sutures and anastomosis on very fragile tissues and vascular prosthesis, is Purastat sufficient for the control of local hemostasis. Jean Christian. Yep. There is another person to speak. It's impossible to see to hear your question. You can't hear me? Yeah, I hear, but there is another voice. Ah. All right. Uh, Anna, can you shut down the voice? Ah, yeah, you know? I, I can't hear it. It's publicity, I don't know. From the company, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so it's difficult for you, or maybe this is a uh, one presentation. Uh, maybe a question for Professor Ori. Can you hear me, uh, Sunil? Yeah, 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 but uh, not the, not the the question because there is the echo, and uh, now echo. probably the the person removed the echo of this voice. I'm sorry, uh, Anna, can you help us? Maybe during, uh, while Anna is, uh, is correcting the problem, is solving the problem, maybe a question for Professor Sunil. Ori, Sunil, can you hear me? Ah, but I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Yeah, so Professor Ori, in your opinion, what is or what are the most interesting features of Purastat compared to the hemostatic products available on the market? Uh, I can't hear you. We can't hear you. There is the echo. Yeah. Oh, hang on. We can't hear you, uh, Sunil. Okay, hang on. Um, can you not hear me now? Yeah, it's better. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll get as close as I can to the computer. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. it's great. Okay. Um, so, um, as I said, I think it's a very, very simple product to use. It, it The formulation is... is um, uh, is such that you simply have to open the packet and apply it. Um, and um, it, it um, is very quick um, and it will, as you saw in the, in, in, in the videos and uh, both from Roberto and uh, uh, in, the, in the liver video, that it, within a minute you get uh, hemostasis. So it's quite quick. And I, I've noticed there's some other questions here about, you know, does it say it doesn't go hard? It just forms a, like a gelatinous layer over the bleeding point. Uh, it's still relatively transparent, so you can see through and you can actually apply additional su sutures with great ease. Um, and if you want then to put a second application, you can simply uh, remove it or apply uh, another um, application on top. 
So it's, it's really the simplicity of its use which makes it, um, um, I think, very attractive. Um, and it has all the other features that we've mentioned before, which was that uh, it's not from any biological source, so it's totally inert and it doesn't cause any potential um, allergy or allergic response. Professor Ori, have you seen any evidence of inflammation or adhesion following the, the use of Purastat? I can't say I have, but then I don't think I've undertaken any redos in the patients I have used Purastat on. And I suspect that um, we're probably going to get the answer to this question um, in the pediatric population when the rate of redos is much higher. So if, 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 if the, our pediatric cardiac surgical colleagues use this and then they go back for um, redo congenital surgery, we'll probably have the answer to this question. But I certainly don't have any experience um, uh, which, uh, in which I've actually gone back to see if there's any adhesion formation when Puristat has been, uh, has been used. Hmm. But do, do, you th do you think Puristat could, could have some anti-adhesion properties? I, I think, um, as we've heard, I think, as you know, it was originally designed as a sort of scaffold to encourage uh, wound repair and healing. In fact, I think the original uh, research on Puristat, it was for um, uh, encouraging neural regeneration. And so it's been used in many animal models and it's been shown to um, you know, improve um, wound healing. In other words, when I say wound healing, I mean restoration of normal tissue. So rather than healing by scarring, um, you have healing by the restoration of the normal um, uh, tissue um, layers. And uh, there is some indirect evidence from the um, use in gastroenterology where they found that in, um, when Puristat's been applied to anastomosis, that there's a very low rate of, uh, re, you know, uh, if you like, a late bleeding uh, because um, the anastomosis have healed uh, much better. So it may be promoting good wound uh, healing, but we don't have that evidence in cardiac surgery at the moment. Okay, another question from the audience, maybe for, for Professor uh, Bartolomeo. Um, yeah. yeah. There is one question about the application and uh, the curative situation or preventive. Yeah. What's you know. your opinion? Right. This is a good question. Uh, it is the same. I use uh, for curative situation when there is the bleeding and to prevent the bleeding also. When I finish the suture line, I, up, I put the purastat, the long suture line. And if there is the bleeding, the bleeding is more, I put again another, another, another application for purastat. And uh, another question is about the reaction of this purastat. For the moment, until now, no allergic reaction in my patient using Purastat. Okay. Have we, have we lost uh, Rafael Astudillo? We can't see him because we have a question for him. Rafael, are you here? Can you see us? No, Rafael is not. Uh, so, uh, Professor Ori, Yes. Do you use a lot of Purastat during your conventional uh, surgery? Because we could see on the, the video from uh, Rafael that he used he use a lot of Purastat on many surgical sites. Do you have the same, do you use the same amount? Um, I, I, I think, I can't say I use Purastat on every surgical case. I think it just depends on on um, on the if there is bleeding essentially uh, uh, at the end of um, completing the operation. When I say uh, well, at the end of completing the operation, I mean even during, as I mentioned, during bypass. Once I finish the anastomosis, 
I do put what the first application on actually on bypass because I know it does it's quite effective and then I tend to put a second application on after I've come off heart lung bypass and after the protamine has been reversed and you saw that I think with um, uh, what Roberto showed you in his um, arch repair he was using it um, you know with the Thoroflex and he put it on before he had obviously come off bypass and reversed the protamine so the nice thing about it is when it comes into contact with any tissue fluid i.e blood it will start to work and that's i think that's one of the unique properties about it and we don't have to traditionally you know most of the other pure most of the other hemostats apart from probably bi glue is usually applied once you've come off bypass and the, and the um and the protein has reversed the heparin so i think that's that's the nice thing about it so i tend to use it um coming back to your question in um, patients that I know have got fragile tissue. So octogenarians, for example, I often use in Purostat on the, on the suture line and it is very effective. So, uh, Professor, your approach is more curative than preventive to apply Purostat. Um, well, you could, I, you could argue it's a little bit of both because I'm not waiting for the, uh, the reversal of heparin. I'm putting it on bit like Roberto okay. used it on that Thorofex case, he's, he's anticipating there'll be bleed, there may be some suture line bleeding and he's putting it on before he actually has reversed the, uh, the heparin. So I use it in a very similar way. I put it on during bypass and put a second dose on afterwards. Uh, we can see Rafael Astudillo. Rafael, <laughs> yeah, yeah. during the conventional surgery, uh, how, many how many millimeters of Purasta do you use? Well, uh, it depends. I mean, if uh, if it's uh, I have a, I have tried to standardize that. If it's a, a Toraflex, an Arcus operation, I usually take between two and three Purastat, five mils, and uh, I, I just ask the nurse to take it into the into the into the table, operating table, and I have all, always them ready because I know I'm going to use them, and uh, I am. I have standardized that uh, I'm, I'm using it, even if I see that it's not bleeding, it's just because probably it's my fourth year using pure as that now, and I feel so acquainted to using it that uh, it's part of surgery. Uh, I don't want to get bleedings that are very difficult to handle with uh, at the deep uh, of, the, of the wound, or, or, or then uh, I'm just uh, using pure as that directly. Uh, I have been uh, listening to all of you, even uh, even though I haven't been uh, in the in the in the uh, in the uh, uh, even if you you have not been able to see me. But th there is another thing that I think that is very important to 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 say that that is that Purestat is not replacing a suture. I mean. Uh, uh, even if we are very fond of Purastat, we have to say that Purastat is not replacing the suture. Probably no other one hemostatic agent is, is, is replacing the suture. And uh, th there is another thing that I think is very, very important to say in this meeting, and that is that Purastat is not swelling. And what does it mean? It means that, uh, uh, Professor Bartolomeo, you have a, a lot of experience doing thoracic abdominal uh, uh, aortic surgery, and then uh, I actually haven't done that since probably the last 12, 15 years because it's, it has disappeared here in, in, in Scandinavia, that type of surgery. But uh, it's very important to say that since Purostat is not swelling, it's, very, it's, it's indicated probably in that type of surgery because uh, when you are using that very close to the spinal cord, since it's not swelling, then it's, it's safe to use. And that is very important to say because uh, there has been it has been reported cases of uh, paraplegia using another type of hemostatic agents that are swelling. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe uh, I can see time of session uh, uh, will be ended soon. So uh, now it's time to conclude this symposium. I hope. Uh, once again, that you have enjoyed the various presentation on Purastat and you are now convinced of the effectiveness of this product. I wish you an excellent evening.
Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.